Let's move right along to proposition number five, in which we're going to study the isosceles triangle. What's the claim in this proposition? In isosceles triangles, the angles at the base are equal to one another, and if the equal straight lines be produced further, the angles under the base will be equal to one another. And let's check out the givens. Let ABC be an isosceles triangle having the side AB equal to the side AC. So let's draw this out. Let's have this be A, have that be B, and that's C. And the two equal sides are going to be AB and AC. And it's given in the definitions what an isosceles triangle is. An isosceles triangle is a triangle in which two sides, and exactly two sides, are equal. So AB and AC are going to be the equal sides in this triangle. And what's next? Let the straight lines BD and CE be produced further in a straight line with AB and AC, which we can do by postulate 2. So let's extend these a bit further. We're going to take that left-hand side of the isosceles triangle and extend that a bit further. And likewise, we extend a bit further. And what we're going to do just for labeling purposes, that's going to be D, and this will be E. So we just extend the two sides of the isosceles triangle. Now the claim is that I say that the angle ABC, so A to B to C, this angle right here, is equal to the angle ACB, which is this angle here, and the angle CBD, which angle is that? CBD, that's over here is equal to the angle BCE, B to C to E. So as you see, there's two claims here, that these two angles are the same, and also these two exterior angles are the same in isosceles triangles. And notice the relationship, they're opposite to the two equal sides in the isosceles triangle. How are we going to prove this? Let a point F be taken at random on BD. That'll work. It's the point F. Now, from AE the greater, that's this line off to the right-hand side. From AE the greater, let AG be cut off equal to AF the less. Now, what does that mean? We're going to take the length of AF, and we're going to cut that off from the line segment A to E. So that's going to be right here. And remember, we can do this by construction because of proposition number three. And this will be the point G. And we're going to connect some lines next and let the straight lines F to C and G to B be joined. So which are those? So F to C from here to here, and from B over to G. There we go. What we're going to want to do is take note of some of the triangles that are showing up in this diagram, and to highlight those, let me draw those in blue. We have this first triangle, A, F, C that we're going to want to take note of. And we have a second triangle, A, B, G, to take note of. And Euclid is going to want to claim that these two triangles are equal. And let's see why indeed they are equal. Let's return to the text. Then, since AF is equal to AG, AF is equal to AG, why are those two equal? Remember by the construction, using proposition 3, where we cut off from AE, the greater one, and equal AG with respect to AF. So those two are the same. And AB to AC. AB to AC. Why are those equal? Well, that was a given. Remember, it was an isosceles triangle. The two sides FA and AC are equal to the two sides GA and AB, respectively. So we see that F over to A is the same as G over to A. And we also see that A over to C is the same as A over to B. So to use some dash notation to designate the respective sides, if we focus on this triangle over to left, A, F, C, let's notate the bigger side by one dash and a double dash by the smaller one. Notice the sides contained by that triangle. But then if you turn your attention to the one slightly off to the right, AGB, that has the longer side and it has 
the smaller side with the double dash. And also note that they share a common angle, FAG. Therefore, notice side angle side. We can use the previous proposition, proposition four, and we conclude that those two triangles are equal. And now since we know they're equal, we're going to make a bunch of inferences. Therefore, the base FC is equal to the base GB. So the base FC is equal to the base GB. Those two are equal. And the triangle AFC is equal to the triangle AGB, which we've said. And the remaining angles will be equal to the remaining angles respectively, namely those which the equal sides subtend. That is the angle ACF. Let's take note of that. Where's ACF? That's from here to here. That's going to be equal to this angle over here. ABG. And also the angle AFC, that's this one over here, is equal to the angle AGB. That's this one over here. That follows from the equality of those two triangles. So now we're sure that those two triangles in blue are equal to each other. And let's continue. And since the whole AF is equal to the whole AG, so we're turning our attention once again here to here and here over to here. And in these, AB is equal to AC. So AB is equal to AC. Why is that? That was given to us by virtue of the fact that this is an, an isosceles triangle. The remainder BF, which is this, is equal to the remainder CG. Those two are equal. Equals subtracted from equals generate equals. Now we're going to take note of another pair of equal triangles. And let me draw these out. This is going to be from F to B over to C and back to F. And we have another B to G over to C and back over to B. Those two triangles in red. And let's turn back to the text. But FC was also proved equal to GB. So we have F to C. F over to C was proved equal to GB. Remember, we inferred that from the congruence of those two blue triangles. Therefore, the two sides BF and FC are equal to the two sides CG and GB, respectively. Let's take careful note of that. So the claim is BF is the same as GC. That's true from that subtraction argument, equals subtracted from equals. And the claim is that FC, where's FC? That's this over here. FC is equal to GB, which is that, which again follows from the equality of those two blue triangles. And the angle BFC, where is angle BFC? Here to here to here, so it's that angle. BFC is equal to the angle CGB. Where is that? C to G to B. That's over here. Why are those two equal? Remember that follows from the equality of those two blue triangles. And our conclusion is, therefore, the triangle BFC, BFC, this first red triangle, is also equal to the triangle CGB. CGB, that red triangle off to the right. Now let's take careful note why those two are equal. Notice we have this short side here, B to F, that's the same as C to G. And B to G was the same as CF, so we can notate those like so. Notice once again we have sine angle side, so we use proposition number four to infer that these two triangles are the same. Now we're sure that those two red triangles are equal to one another. And now, as we did for the blue triangles, we can proceed to make a bunch of inferences, which Euclid is going to do. And the remaining angles will be equal to the remaining angles respectively, namely those which the equal sides subtend. Therefore, the angle FBC, where's FBC, that's right here, is equal to the angle GCB. GCB, that's right here. Notice how they subtend sides which are proved to be equal. And the angle BCF, where's BCF, that's right here, is equal to the angle CBG. CBG, that's going to be over here. And notice once again that they subtend two sides which are proved to be equal. Now here's the key inference. 
Accordingly, since the whole angle ABG, where's ABG, that's right here, was proved equal to the angle ACF, that's this, and in these, the angle CBG, where CBG, that's right here, is equal to the angle BCF, that's going to be right here. Those two are the same. Notice how they're both members of the two equal red triangles. The remaining angle ABC, which is this, is equal to the remaining angle ACB. Why are those equal? Because it's important to follow this inference. This angle right here is equal to this angle right here, those two angles in the blue triangles. And these two angles are the same here from the red triangles, and equals subtracted from equals generate equals. Therefore, these two angles in the isosceles triangle must be equal. So that was the first claim that Euclid sought to show in this proposition. And the second one, that the exterior angles under the base, that those are the same. We proved those are actually the same already from showing the equality of the two red triangles. But he reiterates, but the angle FBC, that's FBC right here, was also proved equal to the angle GCB. That's from here to here to here. GCB, which are part of those two red triangles, and they are under the base. And that's all for this proposition.